Hi guys, today I found also a very interesting integral here to share with you guys. And I chose this integral specifically because look in the inside, there's absolute values. And we've never done um, absolute value integrals before. So when you're going to solve this integral, are you going to split it up into positive values and negative values? Actually, no. I'm going to do a completely different method from those that they teach you in textbooks. Let's see. This has bounds, right? It's from zero to three. What about we get rid of the bounds? What about we just integrate this as it is, but without the bounds? So then, why don't we first try to integrate absolute value of x? Now, to integrate absolute value of x, let's think. Which method should we use to solve this? U sub? Probably not. What about integration by parts? Because we can just let u equal to absolute value of x and v derivative just be 1. Okay, so then u will be absolute value of x and v derivative will be 1. So we know that v is obviously x and u derivative will be the derivative of the absolute value of x. We don't know that yet, do we? Why don't we try to figure out the derivative of the absolute value of x? As we know, x squared will always be positive. So then x squared will equal to the absolute value of x squared, right? Yes. When we're here, why don't we take the derivative on both sides? So then we'll get 2x. Most of you guys think that x squared, its derivative, will just be 2x. But actually, it's 2x times x derivative because of the chain rule. Okay? So, the right-hand side will become, this is pretty easy, you put the 2 at the front and then multiply by absolute value of x, times the derivative of absolute value of x. Now, look, we have what we want. So, if we first cancel out the 2 and divide the absolute value of x to the left-hand side, then we will get the derivative of the absolute value of x will equal to, I'll write it into this form, x over absolute value of x multiplied by x derivative. And this will just be 1. So, this is is the derivative of the absolute value of x. And I'll explain to you later why I wrote x derivative. Let's go back to the integral. We know u derivative will just be this now. Now we can solve the integral. The first part will just be u times v minus the integral of u derivative times v. Now, let's see, we can put this x on the top. Minus, oh, minus integral of x squared over absolute value of x. Now, like I said before, we know that x squared is just absolute value of x squared. So, this will equal to, copy the first term, and minus, this is just absolute value of x squared, and then on the bottom is absolute value of x. Look, we can just cancel these terms out. So then it will become x absolute value of x minus integral of absolute value of x dx. We have what we want again. And then this is also what we want. So then we know that this is equal to this. So then why don't I rewrite the equation? So then this will become... We can just simply move this integral to the left hand side. To get what we want, we can just divide the 2 to the right-hand side. So to solve this question, instead of splitting it up into positive values and negative values, you decided to use the recurrence formula? Um, in a way, yes. We know the first part, which is just that. Do we have to actually do the same thing for all of these two? No, because we can just do a simple u substitution to let u equal to either of these, and then if u equals either of these, then dx will always equal du. 
So it's the same thing as this, but just with u. So then, this is what we do. We can just plug in x minus 1 into all of the x's and x minus 2 into all of the x's. We'll figure out that this will become x minus 1 times absolute value of x minus 1, since we plug this into there. And similarly, we can do the same thing with the x minus 2. We can add these up and then, is it done? No, because we have the bounds. So we have to add these up and then make the bounds go from 0 to 3. If the bounds were anything negative, so for example, if the bounds were to go from negative 3 to negative 1, would that affect anything? Because when you first started solving this, you took the bounds away and you integrated it as indefinite integral, but indefinite integrals and definite integrals are obviously very different things. So is there a difference? Um, actually, it makes absolutely no difference. It doesn't really affect it because we can just substitute the bounds for whatever values the bounds are into the, uh, the answer. So I'll just continue solving from here. So then it'll become this plus this plus this. We can just substitute the bounds into all of this. We'll first substitute 3 in here. So then we know that it will become 9 over 2. And then this, if you do the calculations on your own, it should be just 2. And for this, it's just 1 over 2. Minus, if we substitute 0 in here, then the first term will obviously just be 0. The second term will be negative 1 half. And the last term will be negative 2. This first bracket will just be 7. The second bracket will be this zero is just gone. And then this is minus, this is minus, this is minus. So if we open brackets, then we'll get plus one half and plus two. So then this is just nine and one half. So this is the final answer of this integral. Now I'm going to cover one bonus question related to this integral. As you should know, we know that integral of tangent x dx is negative ln of cosine. But then, have you guys ever tested the derivative of this? I bet you didn't. So, why don't we just take the derivative of this? But, we don't know the derivative of this yet, because we only figured out absolute value of x derivative. But then, this is a function, so then we need to find out the derivative of the absolute value of a function. So then we'll do that right now. We'll have a f of x derivative. Now we do the same thing. We add um, a square. So then we'll get absolute value of x squared equal to fx squared. So then we do the same thing, we take a derivative on both sides. So then we get 2 times the absolute value of fx times the derivative of the absolute value of fx equal to, this is just 2 times f of x. And then here we need to write the derivative of fx. So this is the reason why I wrote x derivative previously because later we were going to do this and this makes much more sense now. So we do the same thing, we can cancel the 2 out and then we can divide the absolute value of fx to the right hand side so then we'll get the absolute value of fx derivative will just be, we write it into that form that I said so on the top is fx and then on the bottom is the absolute value of fx multiplied by the derivative of fx. So this is the formula we're going to use to solve this bonus question. We won't just use the formula just yet because we know that the derivative of ln of anything will just be that thing's reciprocal. And then multiplied by its derivative. Now we need to figure out the derivative of the absolute value of cosine x. And for this, we can use this formula again. So then this would be, we copy the first term, multiply by, we use the formula. So it's the function, which is cosine x, 
over the function's absolute value and then multiply by the function's derivative, which is clearly negative sine x. Now, we can put this negative at the front and put this sine x at the top. So then we'll get pi by sine x cosine x over absolute value of cosine x. We can just multiply these two fractions together to get, to get negative on the bottom is just absolute value of cosine x squared and on the top is just sine x cosine x. Like I said before, this will always be positive. So we can get rid of the absolute values. So then it will become this. And then we can cancel out our cosine x to become negative tangent x. And if we multiply a negative 1 to this side, then we will get the derivative of negative long cosine being tangent. And that's the same as saying this. So this is the solution to the bonus question that I have given you. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. And if you like content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it. <laughs>